So this practical is based on ADA.NET connectivity using connected architecture. So prerequisite for this practical is initially you must have a table. So I have created a table customer with customer ID and customer name. Now we require two procedures. One procedure is to perform all insert, delete and update and second procedure is to fetch the customer records. So first procedure which is of customer insertion, deletion and updation. So we have added one flag variable. So we are passing this flag variable from a application and accordingly if this flag variable is equals to 1 this will insert a customer record and if it is 2 it will update a customer record and if it is 3 it will delete the specific customer. Now let's create an application. So it will be a windows based application. So we'll take two text boxes. This is for customer ID, this is for customer name. Then we require one button. Let's say this is for insertion, this is for updation, this is for deletion, and let's say this is for fetch. Let's change the properties of these buttons. Let's give this as insert. So I'll just change its name property to BTN insert. Second one, let's give this as BTN fetch or BTN select. Or we'll just give the name to let's say search. Third one will be for let's say update change its name to btn update and last one is for delete change its property to delete take a label control also Save this. Now we'll have to write the code for this. Just double click on insert. Now for the namespace is required system dot data dot SQL client. System dot data is already available. Next step is as we are using connected architecture, so we require SQL connection as one object for establishing the connection. SQL command command object. We require SQL data reader to fetch records. Okay. 
Now we'll write one function. It's a user defined function to establish a connection, or you can say we are instantiating a connection object. Here we'll pass the connection string. So we'll get the connection string from a connection. Select the properties, you'll find this connection string. Paste it here. Now for insertion, write the code, just try catch block. In case any exception, to this catch this exception. Now establish the connection. Then instantiate command object. Give the procedure name SP customer and second parameter is connection object. Now <coughs> the next step is pass the parameters to that procedure. This will be my first parameter procedure pa parameter. So at the rate cost ID. Comma its data type data dot value equals to you'll get this value from first text box text. Now as this value is an integer, so I need to convert this text box value to and 32. Similarly, the second parameter we have to pass as a customer name. So this will be first name. Its type is I catch and here text box 2. And there is no need to convert that text box value to an integer as by default it takes string con dot open now we require command objects method execute non query as we're performing insertion operation and con dot close this one more statement we forget to write here is as this statement is a stored procedure now this consists of a stored procedure so we need to just specify here one statement cmd dot command type equals to command type dot stored procedure just put the message set it this is my insertion method let's write on fetching of a record and one more parameter we forget to write here is the flag variable so it's type first integer and here passing we are passing one so this it will check this value one in the stored procedure so if this flag is one it will insert now let's fetch the record so i'll use the same statements instead of here i'll use fetch customer and it requires only one parameter and there is no need of this parameter also but here we require a data reader object so dr equals to cmd dot execute reader so as we are fetching the record from the database so we require a data reader now just use that reader object to display the value of a 
custom name equals to dr of zero dot to string. So zero means in this query we have only one element that is one column so it's a zero if i'm taking second parameter so that will be one it means here we'll have to write the one so initially it has only one value as a parameter that we are fetching so we'll have to specify zero over here now <clears throat> need of this we have to open the connection just before this data reader and close the connection after completion of this and you can close the dr also let's check this first So first we'll insert some value 101 customer name let's say Gary insert it is inserted successfully let's check whether record has been inserted properly or not just check the customer table show table data so you'll see here Gary has been inserted let's search the record So we'll search 101 and search. So we'll find Gary. If I'll search one and search, so we'll fetch the record number one with the customer name VIKS. So these two functionalities are working properly. Now let's go for update and delete so just come to your form again just double click on update now for i will use same code just copy it and paste it but here parameter will be and for update we require only okay we require both the parameters right so here just put the message updated rest of the things will be same then for delete we require again same things just put the value three here We'll pass this all these parameters now instead of this text box 2 we'll put some dummy values because we are going to delete with the customer id so let's put the message deleted and let's execute this now we'll fetch first record now we'll update this record it's showing updated let's see whether it has been updated in the table or not just open show table data just refresh it so you'll find it's updated now let's try for delete operation so we'll delete 101 let's see whether 101 has been deleted or not just refresh this you'll find 101 has been deleted 